Today, we refer to Viking Age Scandinavians, broadly as the Vikings, as if they were one people. The fact is that the historical group known as the Vikings were in many ways very different. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle mentions Danes and Northmen, or Norwegians, as separate, and the Annals of Ulster from Ireland makes a clear distinction between the Danes and Norwegians, and in the East, the Swedes are referred to separately, as the Ruse. It's important to understand that at the beginning of the Viking Age, no one identified themselves as Swedes, Danes, or Norwegians, belonging to a country. Instead, they identified themselves by their specific region of origin. For example, according to the Annals of Angulim, and the Annals of St. Bertan, the Norwegian group who sacked the city of Nantes in 843 called themselves Vestfoldingi, which means men of Vestfold, and not Norwegians. Mostly, the primary sources we have on the Vikings and their culture are histories written by Christian and Muslim scholars, talking about heathen or pagan Vikings, creating a very much two-dimensional view of them. An example of this is how Muslim chroniclers clearly views this through the cultural and religious lens of Islam, and we see the same tendencies from the Christian writers. The historian al yakubi in his study of the Mediterranean, linked the Scandinavians from Sweden, known as the Rus, to those from Denmark who sacked Seville in 844, saying it was carried out by the Magus, who are called the Rus. His view was that they had similarities between them, but he also didn't understand their differences. And in the account we have from Ibn Fadlan, it says that there were few differences between the Ruse and the Danes. One notable thing was that the Ruse were covered in blue tattoos, which is not something that comes up in the Western Chronicles about the Danes and the Norwegians. And it's also noted that the Danes and Ruse could talk to each other with ease, something Scandinavians also can today. So what were the differences between the Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish Vikings? Let's find out. The Swedes, then known as Varangians, or Rus, stayed true to their pagan ways for the longest out of the three, only becoming Christian in the late 11th century. The Swedes' most important city during the Viking Age was Burka, founded by one of the early Swedish kings and situated in Lake Malaren close to the modern capital Stockholm, which ultimately connects to the Baltic Sea. And it was from here they started to spread down the rivers of Volga and Dnieper, in modern-day Russia, Belarus and Ukraine, reaching as far as Constantinople, Damascus and Baghdad, where they traded, raided and even became the personal guards of the Eastern Roman Emperor, called the Varangian Guard. They established long trade routes to the Middle East and around the Black Sea and avoided other places, until the late 9th century when, according to the Russian primary chronicle, the brothers Rurik, Sinius, and Trevor were invited by the Slavs to be their rulers. Why and how this event occurred is unclear, but most historians believe this was a capitulation by the Slavs, after years of raids. The name Rus comes from an old Norse word meaning, the men who row. The earliest sources mentioning the Rus come from the beginning and middle of the 9th century from Byzantium, Persia, and France. All of them describe the Slavs and the Rus as two distinct groups, with the Rus dominating the Slavs. But later, the chronicle doesn't distinguish between the Slavs and the Rus to the same degree. Meaning that the Swedish Vikings seems to have assimilated quickly, much like the Vikings did in Normandy, where they spoke French and adopted French customs and traditions, within a generation. They were excellent explorers and tradesmen, but simply not as violent as the other types of Vikings, I'm speaking in relative terms here, they terrorized many along the Baltic. And this is something many people misunderstand about the Vikings and how they operated. The Vikings didn't necessarily go out to either trade or plunder, they were pragmatic, and were open for both of course. This depended on what the Vikings believed would be the smartest and most profitable way to proceed. If the forces they were up against were stronger than them, or if they knew that an attack on a place would spawn a strong military reprisal, they would of course not attack. They were opportunistic, smart, and just as cunning as their god Loki. Other things that seemed to be unique to the Swedes were their grooming habits, their coloring of their faces with blue paint, 
among other details, stands in contrast to the Danes and Norwegians. Something the Frankish chronicler Rimbert also recounts after his travel to Sweden, where he describes the unusual and shocking religious rituals of the Swedes at Uppsala, including human sacrifice. However, how different they were from their Danish and Norwegian cousins from a cultural and spiritual standpoint, is still debated among historians. It is hard to say anything for sure, as the sources in question have disagreements that undermine their credibility. Swedes ultimately held on to the Viking lifestyle the longest, and was the last of the three Scandinavian kingdoms to abandon the old Norse gods and convert to Christianity. Even though the Swedes mostly operated in the East, they also journeyed and conquered land and riches in England, France, Spain and Italy. The Viking Age began with raids on a Christian monastery in 791 and in 793 at Lindisfarne. These raids, that started the Viking era, are believed to have been done by Norwegian Vikings, but like many things about the Viking world, we cannot say this for sure. The uniting of Norway to a single country supposedly happened in 872 by Harald Finehair, but most historians agree that his domain didn't include some parts of central and northern Norway. The first king to rule the entire Norway was a Dane, Canet the Great, but Norway was then a part of the great Nordic empire he had created, and Norway as a single country with only one king, didn't happen until Magnus the Good, became king in 1035 AD. The reason for the late unification was that Norway was a very difficult country to rule. It has steep cliffs, deep fjords, waterfalls and huge mountain ranges that you need to negotiate in order to reach people. And Norwegians have always been a fiercely independent people, feeling strong connections to their local community, rather than to a king that lives hundreds of miles away. The succession to the throne system is an important key to understand the political development in Norway during the Viking Age. In Norway, the main rule was that all sons of former kings could inherit the kingship. The rule of succession meant that several kings could rule at the same time. This was an important cause of strife and conflict between various congregations and their followers. Norway is therefore the country with the most unrest internally, with several civil wars happening during the Viking Age. And the Norwegians didn't discriminate who they attacked. They didn't care if you were the same people as them and terrorized the Danes, Swedes and other Norwegians with their attacks and raids. The Norwegian Vikings were utterly crazy warriors and was considered to be the bravest, craziest and most badass. The archaeological evidence suggests that most of the Vikings who used axes in combat were from Norway. And most of the berserkers we hear about also came from Norway. Norwegians were more into raiding and not so much about settling, though there are exceptions of course. They settled in Ireland, where they like the Danes in England, kept their Viking ways and eventually melted together with the locals. In Iceland they of course started a new settlement, very much uninfluenced by other people and their culture. The same can be said about their Greenland settlement, which lasted until their abandonment in the 15th century due to climate change. The Norwegians also went to North America on several trips, even trying to start a settlement at Vinland. The reason for the abandonment of the settlement is unclear, with some believing it was due to hostile natives, while others think it was because of the long distance to their homeland. Either way, we do know that there were trips to America also after they abandoned to settle there, which is believed was to gather and trade goods. The Norwegians are also considered to be the best shipbuilders, something that became evident when the Osberg ship was found in Norway, built as early as the start of the 9th century. Harald Bluetooth is believed to have conquered and united Denmark, before converting to Christianity when he was baptized in 965 AD, making Denmark become the first Christian country of the three. His runic commemoration of that epic event in Denmark's history, is the first time scholars have found written evidence of the word Denmark being used, although they believe the name was commonly used before that. In the second half of the 9th century the Danes stopped raiding, switched tactics, and turned into conquerors. In 865 the Danes invaded England, which was then divided into three kingdoms, but by 874, 
only the southernmost kingdom remained in Anglo-Saxon hands. But later, King Alfred defeated the Danes, and in 879 Alfred and the Danish leader, Guthrum made a treaty. England was divided between them, and Alfred became the first of only two kings of England, to be given the title, the Great, after his death. The Danes, unlike the Swedes did not assimilate, but kept many of their distinct cultural characteristics, and where they settled, in this way became a melting pot between the Viking and the Anglo-Saxon cultures. But in Francia, modern-day France, one could argue that the Danes were even more successful. Rollo the Walker was in 911 made into French aristocracy in order to stop the Viking raids on French soil. There were a total of 13 attacks on Paris, mostly by Danish Vikings, but after Rollo was given Normandy, which of course is named after the Vikings, he was able to stop the raids. We don't know the nationality of Rollo for sure, he is named as a Norwegian in some chronicles and as a Dane by other sources. However, most of the Vikings he brought with him to France, we know were Danes, so many historians lean towards a Danish origin for Rollo. His descendant, Willem the Bastard, or William the Conqueror as he preferred to be called himself, would later invade England in 1066 and became the new ruler of that island. But the most famous of the Danish Vikings were of course Canet the Great. At one point, he was the kings of not only Denmark, but of Norway, southern Sweden, Greenland, the Faroe Islands, Shetland, Orkney and parts of England, making it into a great Nordic empire and rising him in terms of size and power to the top, as the most successful of all the Viking kings and conquerors. However, his empire did not survive long after his death, because England became independent in 1042 and Norway the same in 1047. Canet is the second and last English king in history, who've been awarded the title, the Great, after his death. Of the three countries, Denmark is without a doubt the one under the hardest pressure from other rulers. To the north they had the Swedes, but also the Norwegian Vikings, who didn't discriminate who they attacked. They frequently raided the Danish coast and plundered merchant ships, both going to and from Denmark. But also from the south where the Holy Roman Emperor, who dominated big parts of Europe at the time, was pushing his own interests. So in this way, the Danes were the stronger of the Vikings, both in political and military power. The Danes were the strongest of the three, being forced to unify their country to withstand the pressure from all the different sides. They also had the biggest empire and the greatest Viking army, when the great heathen army invaded England, which is believed to be the biggest Viking army of all time. They were also the first to Christianize, following Harold Bluetooth's conversion in the 850s, becoming French aristocracy, and eventually ended up on the throne of England. The Danes were also settlers and made their mark on British culture and language, and about 700 original Scandinavian words are still in use in Standard English, although many more can be found in dialects from around England. The Swedes chose a different strategy and assimilated into the Slavic people when becoming their rulers, even giving the people and country they made their new home a name, Russia. They seem to have focused more on trade than the other two, but also ending up as far as the Middle East, and giving name to the East Roman Emperor's personal guards, the Varangian Guard, though the most famous Varangian Guard was Harald Hardrada, who was Norwegian. Although we certainly cannot trust the Norse sagas as factual in all cases, they do attribute many of the Viking Age heroes to Sweden. However, these are the semi-mythical rulers of Sweden during the Viking era, among whom we find Bjorn Ironside and Eric Sedrasol, but also straight-up gods such as Odin, Jilf, Njord, and Frey, so this has to be taken with a grain of salt. The most famous Viking is of course Ragnar Lothbrok, who is believed to have come from Sweden, but he is mostly famous because of a TV show, not so much for his achievements. Without the show Vikings' great success, Canute the Great and Harald Hardrada would be the two contenders for that title instead. The reason we hear less about Swedish Vikings is because they traded more than they plundered, and in this way didn't get the same reputation as their Scandinavian counterparts. But also because they quickly assimilated into their new culture, 
not insisting on keeping their old ways in the same way as the Danes and Norwegians. The Swedes, or the Rus, even gave their name to a country, Russia. The name might come from a small area in Sweden, called Roslagen, northeast of Stockholm. The Norwegian Vikings are said to be the bravest, fiercest, and the most crazy Vikings of the three, with famous and brutal warriors like Eric Bloodaxe, Harald Hardrada, Saint Olaf Haraldsson, Eric the Red, and of course Freydis Eric's daughter. The Norwegians attacked everybody and anybody, leading to many civil wars or internal struggles that split the country for centuries, making it difficult to unite under one ruler. They were also the most pioneering and adventurous, sailing to Iceland and Greenland where they settled successfully, but were less successful in America, where they gave up after a few tries. They settled Ireland and England in the same way as the Danes did, settling in Normandy, and would later melt together with the Anglo-Saxons, Franks and the Irish. Norway is also where we have most of the state churches, where many of the mythical people and creatures are said to have lived and of course where most of the berserkers came from. No matter which country the Vikings came from, history has taught us one thing, you wouldn't want to meet any of them without a well-prepared army. I hope you found this presentation interesting, and if you did, please smash the like button as if you were a berserker. And please subscribe if you haven't done that already, and leave a comment below who you find to be the most interesting of the three different Vikings and I hope to see you in the next one.